The African Union celebrates its Golden Jubilee anniversary at a time of huge movement and transformation. Africa is rising, the fastest growing continent in the world. Democracy and improved policy making have brought about striking advances in economic and social development. There is a new recognition among African leaders that development cannot be achieved without good governance. There's a lot of people without water, electricity and housing. We like to see service delivery, you know, sanitation, you know, we like to see better education, you know, health sector. For the first time, we tell the remarkable story of how Africa's leaders, in partnership with Africa's people, developed the African Peer Review Mechanism, the APRM, to deepen governance. The APRM grew out of the crisis Africa faced at the beginning of the 1990s. The continent was suffering its lost decade of economic stagnation and aid dependency. But the long struggle against colonialism was also ending with the fall of apartheid in the early 90s. Independence provided the opportunity for rethinking the African unity and renaissance project. A group of influential leaders came together, generating two related visions, the New Partnership for Africa's Development, NEPAD, and the APRM. And we said, it's clear that it's important that this, this state, the African state, which must play an important role in terms of this development, has to be empowered, must be strong enough to play this role. And therefore, we had to say, what is it that would characterize this, this capable African state? Hence, the peer review mechanism to say, here are the benchmarks which we think would make for the kind of state we're talking about, and indeed even beyond states, which would make for the kind of society that we need. We believe that we would generate the atmosphere that would attract uh, investments, both from within and from without. Um, to do this, we subscribed to rule of law, uh, of course, re respecting the independence of the judiciary, um, respecting uh, fundamental human rights, respecting uh, the private sector as a, a necessary agency to partner the public sector uh, in unleashing the wealth of Africa. In the period preceding the APRM uh, processes, we had a structural adjustment program which was introduced by the World Bank and uh, IMF, if one were to say that. And therefore, these were actually externally imposed tools that were meant to scrutinize African governments or review African governments in terms of progress uh, in economic uh, development. So the shift in paradigm was essentially uh, from the what has been called accountability to external actors, whereby because of these conditionalities that were imposed on Africa, countries were obliged to account to external actors and rather to domestic constituencies, uh, citizens and stakeholders who were the real beneficiaries of development. We are taking our uh, fortune in our hand. In the past, they used to tell us do this, do it this way. Uh, this time, we want to say this is our program, and that was what happened. The structure of the mechanism began taking shape. It would respond to the development needs of ordinary Africans through four pillars. Democratic and political governance, economic governance, socio-economic development, and corporate governance. On each of these, countries would be offered peer support, peer review, and peer understanding. Governance 
has been unpacked uh, into those four components, those four pillars, under which these, the definitions have been further unpacked and indicators have been developed. So that we're not talking about governance in a very amorphous way, but we actually have very specific indicators that we're examining. The major highlight, first of all, is the commitment by heads of state to accept to be peer-reviewed in terms of governance. I think that by itself was a very, very important decision. But they were also very wise. They did not make this obligatory. They left it open. You come in voluntarily if you so wish. Il faut dire que l'adhésion au mécanisme africain d'évaluation par les pairs se présente comme une opportunité pour des pays qui font le choix d'y adhérer parce que cette initiative permet aux États qui y adhèrent d'échanger des expériences et de s'auto-évaluer mutuellement pour voir quelles sont les bonnes pratiques qui existent au niveau de chaque État et aussi quelles sont les faiblesses qui existent pour essayer de corriger. Le mécanisme africain d'évaluation par les pairs au terme de 10 ans, on se rend compte qu'il a engagé une nouvelle forme de communication entre les gouvernants et les gouvernés. Il a apporté aussi une, un regard différent des euh, autorités, des gouvernants, des gouvernements, des États sur la gouvernance, sur le concept de gouvernance et sur la nécessité de redevabilité, de reddition de compte. Those heads of state who sign up to the mechanism join the APR forum, which is the highest body. The forum appoints the PEP, a seven-member panel of eminent persons, which oversees the process. The most important aspect of the APRM is the national self-assessment process. This national self-assessment process has to be done through multi-stakeholder engagement. They, uh, they are uh, interviewed, uh, they contribute to the scientific study that's being done. They also have the opportunity to validate the report that comes out to agree or to disagree with it openly. But I have that quand il y a un regard extérieur, quand des experts viennent et ont la possibilité de rencontrer les populations, effectivement, euh, elles ont la liberté euh, de dire ce qu'elles pensent. Et cela a souvent été retenu, et bien sûr, avec euh, la participation de tous les parlementaires, aussi bien de la majorité que de l'opposition. But equally amazing is what, what happens at the level of the heads of state behind closed doors. The frank exchange... The, the issues that uh, concern them and mutual sharing. Oui, je, je, je crois que le mécanisme a été très exemplaire au Burkina parce que euh, si vous regardez aujourd'hui dans la presse nationale, que ce soit l'opposition, que ce soit la majorité, euh, tout le monde se réfère aujourd'hui au rapport du MAEP. Euh, ça veut dire que le rapport a mis quand même le doigt sur des questions de gouvernance qui touchent vraiment la sensibilité des populations. More than 30 countries have signed up for review. Around half of these have completed the five-stage review process. Extraordinary stories have emerged as the APRM spotlight has fallen on different countries. The idea that African countries and their citizens can learn from each other and share best practices is a unique feature of the mechanism. Kenya. East Africa's largest economy and most stable country erupted into violence after disputed presidential elections in 2007. As the world watched, African leaders raced back and forth to broker a ceasefire and negotiate peace. The earlier 2006 APRM country review raised the alarm about mounting ethnic tensions but was ignored. In terms of the forecasting that was done, 
uh, before the 2007 elections. I think, unfortunately, uh, we had a government that uh, did not heed a lot of warnings, not only the warnings from the APRM, but also from uh, intelligence sources, as we have seen now, through various commissions that have looked back at what had gone wrong. And I think that is a point for us to learn from, that we should not uh, wish away or ensure that we have institutions that cannot adequately respond. In 2010, the country ushered in a new constitution, widely considered to be one of the most progressive on the continent. Civil society participation in the earlier APRM report and later in the drafting of the new constitution ensured that the concerns of ordinary Kenyans were heard. Most Africans remain unaware of the APRM. Financing operations, institutional capacity and difficulties with implementation continue to impinge on the way the APRM works. We want to review the review globally. Ten years we have carried out this task. What have we achieved in those ten years? Where have we gone? I want uh, private sector element to now be brought in strongly in the formulation of the ABR itself is just the idea of knowing that the community that you want to see benefit are really sensitized enough to understand what we are doing. The idea that it is optional disturbs me a little bit as an African. It, it compromises when Africa makes a claim that we can find African solutions to African problems. Um, because what does it say um, about why it is voluntary? I, I, I would like that discussion opened up. Right. I'm not worried about those who are staying out. I'm worried about those who are on the boat and I'm hoping that they get what they, came, they get what they came for. The APRM understandably highlighted the moment when the peers, that is the presidents, reviewed one another. The highlight of the APRM should be the completion of the National Programme of Action. Because that is, that is what is important. Well, I think one of the first things that we have to do as uh, focal point members is actually to sell the idea of the APRM more vigorously, more robustly, so that every citizen of Africa understands that we are here working for them working to ensure that we provide them with better governance. Uh, and when they have ownership of it, then half the problem is done. The first 10 years of the APRM have seen unprecedented progress in governance. The APRM has been identified as a powerful, transformative tool, and yet, it is largely unknown by ordinary Africans, needs more resources and requires compliance with recommendations. The challenge for the next 10 years is to build on the successes, apply the lessons learned and to make the APRM more effective for the benefit of every African. In fact, I think it's the most effective instrument for our pan-African integration. If we're thinking about democracy, we're thinking about democratic governance and we're thinking about integration to the extent that we'll be able to close our gaps uh, and learn more about ourselves. I think it's the APRM, that is the instrument that fosters it. Donc c'est vraiment un outil qui appartient aux Africains. Il est, il, il est fait par des Africains. Il concerne des Africains. Je crois que c'est une conquête des Africains. De c'est la, c'est le reflet de la conscience euh, euh, auto, autocritique des populations africaines. Comment en fait euh, travailler, euh, euh, travailler plus, plus groupé, plus condensé, euh, plus, plus effet de synthèse, euh, plus euh, euh, accélération du processus avec pratiquement les mêmes moyens et peut-être avec moins de moyens. The African peer review system should not be treated as, as incidental. That you do everything else and when you've done whatever, in your spare time, you say, well, what about the African peer review? I think it has to be integral. It has to be integral to what, to everything that we do every day. Now, we have made 
tremendous progress. And what do we need to do? We need to do more of the good things that we have done. And we need to make sure that when these good things are done, they are done for a purpose. And what is the purpose? To make Africa a continent that will be regarded as one that is making life better for all its people. Thank you.